Weekly update for uh, Friday, July 17. And we're going to start off with an announcement. This came in last Friday. Hey Dave, Jasper Ray Robinson was born 7-7-2015 at 4.01 p.m. He and Mama are both healthy and happy. Now back to catering to the every adorable whim of the needy little hatchling. All the best, Sean. And all the best to Rachel, Sean, and little Jasper Ray from all of us here at uh, A Moment of Service. And the latest wrist news. Um, we've had a bit of a setback. Uh, the uh, Rockford Orthopedic Center, I gave them a call and it turns out that they have two MRI machines but both of their MRI machines are 1.5T and not 3T. So that brings us back to Plan B and Plan C. Plan B, uh, Steve H. and Liz in Chicago, uh, old friends of the family. Uh, can you call the clinic that you have in mind and find out if they have a 3T MRI machine? And uh, Plan C, uh, Dr. Troy in, uh, in Texas, uh, if you can call your MRI site and find out if they have a 3T machine. And uh, what the heck, let's, let's save a little time and just throw it wide open. Anybody that thinks they've got a line on an MRI clinic, uh, we'll see if we can uh, get a, a doctor's referral through Steve H. Uh, but just give them a call and see if they have a 3T MRI machine. They'll know exactly what you're talking about. I spoke to the MRI department directly at, uh, at the Rockford Clinic and uh, said right away, yeah, it's uh, 1.5. But good news on the same front, uh, I'm recording this July 15th and yesterday, July 14th, I was able to sign Four, count them, four of the prints in uh, Serapis Archive number three. Spreading them out over the course of uh, all day yesterday. It takes a lot of shifting around and balancing and uh, tilting the arm at uh, different angles and uh, making sure that there is a cushion underneath it. Um, it's the, the most comfortable angle to hold it at is, uh, of course, the one that uh, gives the worst autograph and the one that gives the best autograph is uh, the one that hurts the most. Uh, that only stands to reason. In a related development, uh, all of the refund checks on Cerebus Archive number three for the people who had uh, pledged for uh, individual drawings and uh, hand-lettered book plates and things like that that just aren't going to be possible. Uh, all of those checks have gone out and uh, the U.S. refunds are denominated in U.S. funds. They're drawn on the U.S. fund account. Um, even though you paid for uh, uh, your pledge item in uh, Canadian dollars, the uh, Canadian dollar has uh, tanked pretty good compared to where it was in uh, March and April of this year. So uh, it just seemed easier to send a check in U.S. funds, um, go out and buy some peanuts or something, or, or potato chips or something fun with whatever is left over. Letter from an editor at uh, the Wall Street Journal. And uh, I'm not going to name him here and get him in trouble for using company stationery for personal letters. Uh, and I'm also not going to get him in trouble for writing to someone that only 600 and some odd people on the planet don't think is a misogynist. But with those qualifications, he writes, as someone who has been an editor for far longer than I have been a writer, professionally at least, I am truly moved by your consideration for your audience. There is certainly a tension in journalism between respect for your subjects and readers on one hand, 
and commitment to, quote, the story, unquote, on the other. Guiding writers through that process is certainly a challenge. Uh, goes on to say, but I confess to never having given much thought to how fiction writers might feel in the same situation. It's fascinating that it's so acute for you. Have you always felt that way, or did you come into it later in your career? If the latter, do you remember when that point was? Well, it's true that uh, I was writing fiction, but uh, it was always writing fiction in uh, the service of and uh, pursuit of uh, larger truths, capital L, capital T, uh, and attempting to do that through adherence to uh, cl the closest possible adherence to reality, uh, at least small r, hopefully capital R, reality. And a big part of that was and is definitely acknowledging the fact that uh, in a free democratic society, but also a capitalist society, somebody's got to pay for that. And uh, the people who were paying for that were always the Cerebus readers, um, who are also Cerebus patrons. So when you're in pursuit of truth, and you're doing it by adhering to reality, and obviously what you're doing is adhering to your own best perception of reality. Uh, somewhere along the line of 26 years, you're going to offend people who um, don't see reality the way that you do it. So uh, the only sensible course of action has been really all along uh, don't look over the heads of your readers and patrons and fans who are here going, where did everybody go? Or, why don't I have more people showing up? Or, how many more people are showing up? No, look down here where the actual readers are, the people who are here and have stayed here and continue to stay here. Take care of everything uh, between you and the immediate audience and you just have to uh, uh, leave the, the question of how many people are coming in and how many people are leaving and how many people are staying and how long they're staying. Uh, that's really in the hands of God. I'm not even going to be able to recognize uh, how that's going at any given point which is one of the reasons for these weekly updates, is this is talking to the people who are here. I might be talking to eight people one week, and I might be talking to 800 people the next week. I'm not going to know that. No way to know that. And as I used to say back in the Cerebus TV days, Cerebus TV, smooth segue. Introducing the Cerebus Superfan Award. And this is an award that actually came about because of uh, the weekly meetings with Sandy Atwell about how Cerebus Online is doing. Obviously, he's checking all references every week. Uh, where is Dave Sim being talked about? Where is Cerebus being talked about? Uh, what is our presence on the internet? Uh, so, <laughs> what something that definitely come, came to Sandeep's attention uh, right away was uh, Jesse Lee Herndon has been doing uh, reviews of each issue of Cerebus and he's now up to, um, I, I don't even know how far he is now, I think he was up to issue 18, uh, Sandeep said last week when we got together and it was uh, we got to find something to do for, for Jesse Lee Herndon and uh, uh, have it there on the table for, uh, for anybody else to be thinking about. Can you, can you come to Sandy Atwell's attention to the extent that Jesse Lee Herndon has? Uh, we got a little clip here from, uh, from one of Jesse's re most recent reviews. 
The story is most notable for introducing a character I didn't mention during the summary, her name being Astoria. She'll be back in high society. And it's also notable for, to a lesser degree for being the one and only appearance of Sir Garrick, who will be mentioned a lot later on, or a few times later on. Uh, this is his only appearance, yet, you know, I still think there's a story there with him. I can't say that I know every Cerebus fan that's out there. Um, but definitely when uh, uh, Sandeep was telling me about this guy who is doing uh, uh, all of these online reviews of each issue of Cerebus, and then uh, last week was the first time he said, uh, or I think it was two weeks ago, he said uh, that his name is Jesse Lee Herndon. And I went, oh, Jesse Lee Herndon, the uh, Mighty, Mo Mighty Morphin Power Rangers guy. That was uh, definitely one of the one of the most popular segments on Cerebus TV, uh, where Jesse had uh, requested Cerebus as a Power Ranger at, when I was uh, still selling uh, individual sketches, and um, that turned into a very funny segment with. Uh, the C minus kid uh, lip syncing to uh, the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers theme song, so that was an instant, instantaneous connection. Oh, Jesse Lee Herndon, yeah, I know Jesse Lee Herndon, and of course uh, Sandy, who's just uh, mocking this up on computer uh, with that puckish wit for. Uh, which he is little noted today, but I'm sure will be long remembered by future generations. Wrote. For outstanding service in the name of Cerebus the Aardvark, you have made your ancestors proud. Please hang this in a place of honor above your fireplace. And you'll notice he even uh, has the American spelling on honor. That's, that's very thorough going. So uh, I think we're actually just going to put this on, uh, on Jesse Lee Herndon's uh, uh, plaque. It's, uh, what the heck, um, it might just motivate Jesse to go out and get himself a fireplace. This is uh, addressed to Tim W. of uh, the Grand, Grand Poobah here at a Moment of Cerebus. Hey Tim, is it possible for us to get voting here? Like, uh, you know, now that I've shown people this, uh, this Cerebus super fan plaque, uh, obviously there's going to be more people out there who want one than, uh, than are going to get one uh, right away. But uh, could, we, could we get like a, a nomination list together of uh, who's going to be the next uh, Cerebus Superfan Plaque Award winner? And as you can see from uh, the weekly update early poll Cerebus Superfan Projection, we have an early leader in Matt Dow with four votes. Uh, that's based on our, uh, our assumption that Matt will be voting for himself, uh, that you're also allowed to have your characters vote for you if you're a cartoonist. So we're, we're, well, they've got to be headline characters. It can't be like everybody that shows up in the background. So uh, this is one vote from Matt, uh, one vote from uh, Beer, and one vote from Iguana, uh, his characters being Beer and Iguana. And uh, we're also figuring that uh, offspring are allowed to vote for you. And uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, Janice Pearl will be voting for Matt. Spouses. Spouses are also allowed to vote for the next Cerebus superfan. Uh, but our uh, Cerebus super fan projection poll expert panel. Uh, we couldn't really decide if Paula was going to vote for for Matt. She seemed more like she might she might vote for for Margaret Liss. Like you know, get real, Margaret Liss versus Matt Dow. Anyway, that's it for uh, the weekly update for July seventeen. Uh, God willing, we'll see many of you next week on uh, July 24th.